The only time I want to poop in a bucket is if I'm fighting in a foxhole. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the Boatworks. The boat behind me is a 1986 Alban 27 family cruiser. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've tore out the inside. I stripped it down to a bare hole and I'm rebuilding it back to something better than it once was. Right now, I'm in the middle of rebuilding the head, the bathroom on my pocket trawler. Since I started this series on remodeling the head in my boat, I've received a lot of questions from the viewers about how is the plumbing system going to work and what are some of the components that I'm going to be using. So I thought I would take this quick episode and I'll talk a little bit about a marine plumbing system, the components, and kind of how everything fits together. I'm going to talk about some of my choices for the various parts of the plumbing system. And in particular, I'm going to discuss the reality of composting toilets versus electric toilets on a boat. It's gonna be a little bit of theory and a little bit of classroom, but I think it'll be helpful. I hope you stick with me. Now let's take a moment to make sure that everyone understands kind of the basics of what we're talking about. In its simplest form, a head on a boat is usually comprised of a toilet, a sink, and maybe a shower. The bathroom on a boat is probably most similar to, say, a bathroom in a recreational vehicle. The vehicle or the vessel carries its own water supply. Wastewater is either collected on board or it's pumped overboard. Fresh water is supplied from the freshwater tank to the galley and also to the bathroom on the boat. Typically, this is done using some type of a pump. It's usually electrical. The pump maintains a constant pressure in the water lines and therefore water is on demand when you go to the sink or to the shower. Usually, the fresh water system is pressurized to about 40 or 50 PSI. You'll often see another component in an RV or a marine system and that's an accumulator tank. An accumulator tank has helps keep the water pressure steady with no sputtering. Hot water for the boat will be supplied by a 10 gallon hot water heater. This will allow me to increase my overall fresh water capacity. The water heater is 120 volt, but it will also be connected to the engine on the boat via heat exchanger. Hot water generated by the engine can last in excess of 24 hours. In this way, the boat will have hot water when it's at the dock, but also underway. Unlike an RV or maybe a house, the water lines in a boat need to be flexible, so they're usually hoses. In recent years, people have begun to use PEX tubing as a form of water lines in their boat, primarily for the ease of installation and the durability of the lines. The water for the toilets on the boat can either be raw water or fresh water, depending on how your system is plumbed. Raw water is water that's pumped on board. Fresh water is water that's contained in the water tanks. Gray water from the sinks or from the shower are usually pumped overboard. Black water refers to sewage and it has to be handled a certain way. Now there's some special rules for boats about what you do with your waste, where and when it can be pumped out, and this can impact the design of your plumbing system. In the case of the Alban 27, I think my toilet's gonna be supplied by raw water. This will allow me to maximize my fresh water supplies for long-term cruising. Now I know what you're thinking. You wanna know how the showers and sinks drain overboard. Now let's remember our nautical terminology. An opening in the hull of a boat is called a through hull. On my Alban 27, there's 10 different <gasps> through holes. That's a lot of holes in my boat. Some through holes are above the water line. Some through holes are below the water line. When they're below the water line, they should be a seacock, which means that they can be opened and closed with some sort of valve. There are three through hole fittings below the water line in the engine compartment. There's also an engine exhaust port. There are four above the water line scupper through hole fittings for drainage. There's a through hole for the galley sink and a through hole for the head sink. Now normally I don't like this many through holes in my boat, but that's the way it came from the factory and one way or another everything's going to get used. Now the scuppers and the sink drains, well they go right overboard through the through hole fittings in the side of the boat. But in the case of the shower, I'm going to have to do something a little bit different. Showers on a boat typically make use of a shower sump. A shower sump is a box that basically sits below the shower and collects all the water. 
In its simplest form, it's a plastic box with an automatic bilge pump, and usually there's some type of mesh screen to collect debris. The problem with the ready-made shower sump is that it requires a certain amount of space, usually in the bilge where you can locate this thing. Because they collect hair and debris, well, they can be unreliable and difficult to clean. I mentioned this before. On some boats, the shower will drain directly into the bilge, and then a bilge pump pumps it overboard. But this is a really bad idea. The soap, the hair, the scum, the organic material, it collects over time, and it can become a source of unpleasant smells. Ask me how I know. The solution is keeping a dry bilge and having your shower pump directly overboard using a dedicated pump with a separate strainer. When a person takes a shower, they turn on the shower pump. When they're done, they pump the shower dry and turn it off. The pump that you use for this is a gray water pump. It's a diaphragm pump. Because of the way it's designed, it's super reliable and it doesn't clog. The pump can be mounted horizontally or vertically on a bulkhead and the strainer can be mounted so it's easy Easy to access. Hey, I just want to take a moment to thank all of our supporters and fans, all of our subscribers, and those of you who are supporting us on Patreon. If you're new to the channel and you're just now checking us out, the single most important thing that you can do is hit that subscribe button. Tell a friend about Motor City Boatworks. This channel would not be possible without your support. Thank you. The interesting thing about my pocket trawler is that the long-term cruising ability is really limited by the freshwater and the wastewater tankage, not so much the electricity or even the fuel capacity range. On a small boat, it is what it is. One of the most important questions is what toilet will I have on my boat? The toilet on my pocket trawler is going to be an electric toilet with a macerator pump. It'll pump directly into a holding tank and then the holding tank will get pumped out when I go to marinas. My experience tells me that an electric toilet on a boat is a reliable and cost-effective solution. It gives the closest experience to having a normal bathroom on your boat. We'll go into the specifics on which electric toilet I'm choosing at a later date. Now, you may hear some folks talk about what's called a composting toilet. It's a type of toilet where human waste is composted and then it's disposed of later on. Based on my time in the Marine Corps and living on a classic boat for one year and a houseboat trawler for another four, I gotta tell you, this is little better than having a latrine on your small boat. It just seems like for long-term livability, this is just not a viable solution. The only time I wanna poop in a bucket is if I'm fighting in a foxhole. The promoters of composting toilets are real zealots, and sometimes they're not entirely honest about the capabilities of the systems that they're promoting. Composting toilets are expensive. Contrary to what you hear, they can smell. They require a lot of upkeep and a little bit of maintenance. There are other products that you have to buy in order to ensure that the composting goes properly and liquids still have to be disposed of on a regular basis. Now, on the other hand, this does mean that an electric toilet attached to a waste tank, well, now you're limiting the range of your vessel because you've got to be near a pump-out station in order to keep your tanks empty. But we have a similar problem with freshwater capacity in that we can only carry so much water. The water supply on my Alban 27 is going to be a freshwater tank. If we're lucky, it'll be about 50 gallons. My goal is to get to 100, but I just don't think I have enough room for that. The holding tank for the boat should also be about 40 or 50 gallons. What I'm going to try and do is get the maximum amount of tankage that I can fit inside the engine compartment of the boat. The original Alban 27 came with a 40-gallon freshwater tank and about a 25-gallon waste tank. But the storage space in the engine compartment wasn't used to its maximum capacity, so I think it's possible to squeeze in a little extra tankage. Now, there's lots more details to come, but I'll be covering those in future episodes as I continue to rebuild the head in my Alban 27. Do me a favor. If you like this episode, if you got something out of it, leave a comment below and spread the word across social media. Next episode, I'm gonna be talking about the through holes for the head in my pocket trawler. I wanna thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.